Today we celebrate life of our spiritual teachers and our own ancestors who taught us how to attain freedom of mind and helped us to become who we are now with the education, with their love and guidance. So it is a time to reflect the root of our life. As you look at the tree, we only see a trunk of branches and leaves, sometimes flowers and fruit, but we don't see their root. But without the root of a tree, they cannot survive. In our one Dharma center, we planted many new trees. They only water it and fertilize it under the ground to nourish the root of the tree so they can take root and, and grow strongly. In our human life, it is similar. There is a visible world we engage daily but there is also invisible world. We are recognizing them here at Alta today. The roots are invisible. Our parents, our parents' parents, and parents' parents' parents, all those uh, lives before us helps us bring to us on this earth and educated us and, and, and empowered us when we were weak. So in our altar, in the center, we have a Tathagata. We celebrate the life of Tathagata today. Tathagata is uh, another name of a Buddha, another name of an uh, enlightened one who attained supreme enlightenment and discovered freedom of mind. So Tathagata is the title of Buddha, meaning Das Khan and Das Khan. Yore, Das Khan and Das Khan. What does this mean? It emphasizes the fact that historical Buddha is a one of many of a continuation of a Tathagata. So this is a very good news, especially in one Buddhism. We <coughs> emphasize we all have a Tathagata seed within us. We need to nourish it, since it's invisible sometimes. When we have this Tathagata seed and recognize it, very powerful teaching and very powerful practice that one day it will awaken us so we can become Tathagata. So all one Buddhist around the world celebrate your life. How does Tathagata practice then. As we celebrate life of Tathagata, we can think about how we can transform ourselves to become Tathagata. The very, very first day, we need a vow, vow to become Tathagata, or have a wish to become enlightened, to have a freedom of mind of dreaming that one day you grow in spirit and have this freedom of mind and become Tathagata. And you have a goal, set the goal. So today we make this vow, this wish, this dreaming, and this goal to practice consistently, daily, until we become Tathagata. So vow in Buddhist practice, especially in Mon Buddhism, is critical. Buddhas and Tathagatas did not make a vow after they got enlightened. You think Buddha got make a vow after they got enlightened? They made a vow before they got enlightened. The vow is critical to overcome any difficulties, any obstacles in your practice. When you have a vow, when you have a disappointment, difficulties, and challenges, you can overcome with the power of a vow. 
when you have a big wish, you can overcome little, small problems. When you have a big wish, like becoming Tathagata, then it is possible to move along the way, even it's stormy water. So we make an Iransang vow, we just chanted it together. In, a, in our Iransang vow, we made a vow to practice our minds and bodies, just like Iransa, which means we cultivate our Buddha nature. We cultivate freedom of our mind. And we vow to gain wisdom through study of our life and universal principles by knowing Irwansa. And we make a vow to use our minds and bodies just like Irwansa. So we are making this vow. In the beginning, we cannot do it. That's why we are making vow, so we can practice it. We can experience it. If we keep practicing with this power of vow, one day you become like Irwansa. Your eyes look at the whole world. Your eyes become Buddha eyes, Irwansa eyes. You see things in the universe as they are. You see their Buddha nature. You see their beauty. You see their goodness. And your ears become Irwansang ears and Buddha ears. You listen to everything as they are, as a Dharma, things to teach you. When we talk about the different lives of uh, spiritual teachers and our ancestors, some are very elevated, become fully enlightened, enjoy this freedom of life, and some are not. Some are still in the struggle. We include all living beings, forms of living beings. We can learn from good things, what to do, make a vow to become like that. And we can learn from difficult things too, negative things too. Make vow not to do that by letting go of all those negativities. So also we make uh, four great vows. First vow, we'll do it together at the end. Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to save them all. This is the first vow. That's why vow is critical to overcome any difficulties in the long, uh, along the way of a path of awakening. Because of this first vow, you make a second vow. I want to eliminate, I want to end delusion. Think about any thought in your mind, constantly chattering mind, making inner noise all the time, consuming your energy. That is the one we make a vow to let it go, to reduce and to end our delusion. Why? Because we want to save all living beings. There is no time for me to entertain this uh, egocentric thought, greed, delusions, or angry, uh, hatred. There is no time for that because I have a big vow to save every being, including myself, including yourself, including our family members. Because of the first and second vow, we made the third vow that Buddha Dharma is uh, limitless, but we vow to learn them all. We vow to learn Buddha Dharma to end delusion, to discover inner freedom, and have ability to save others. And final vow is supreme enlightenment is inconceivable, but we vow to attain it. So the vow to attain supreme enlightenment, to become Tathagata, to become Buddha, is that in order to serve all living beings. So this vow will be a power to overcome any hindrance in your practice and in your life. 
So what are the commonality and differences between Tathagata and you? Commonality is that we all have a Buddha nature. Tathagata has Buddha nature, you have a Buddha nature, I have a Buddha nature. Everyone and everything in the universe has Buddha nature. The differences then, what are the differences? What are the differences between Tathagata and you and Tathagata and the rest of others here? We recognize on our altar. Sotisan said, the Buddhas and enlightened masters have awakened to their own Buddha nature and have attained the freedom of mind. Thus, they break through natural karma and are able to enjoy as they please any of the six realms of existence and four forms of birth. Very powerful message here that Buddhas, the difference between an enlightened one and an enlightened one is that enlightened to your Buddha nature, your own Buddha nature. So in order to find Buddha, you don't need to go anywhere because you just go turn inwardly and go in your mind and recognize and find and discover this Buddha nature within yourself. So don't look for your own Buddha elsewhere. You don't have to take any airplane to go to far distant Asia to find Buddha. So Buddha is the enlightened to their own Buddha nature. That, that is the Tathagata. When you got enlightened, what happened? You attain freedom of mind. When you have a freedom of mind, what will happen? You are free from your natural karma. This is the power. You have a freedom to choose any one of the six realms. If you don't have a freedom, if you are not awakened to your own Buddha nature, how, how are they? What are the unenlightened ones? How they look like? How do they live? So Tessan said, ordinary humans and sentient beings have not awakened to their own Buddha nature. Therefore, they do not have a freedom of mind. So key is it, freedom of mind comes from your awakening. Your freedom of mind comes from your own awakening to your own Buddha nature. Hence being dragged by natural karma. So unenlightened ones who did not awaken to their own Buddha nature, thus they do not have a freedom of mind then, dragged by natural karma, they end up receiving immeasurable suffering. So the unenlightened people, so Tessan described here that, controlled by their karma. Mostly likely here is negative karma because of their three poisoned minds. One makes you controlled by negative <coughs> karma because of these three poisoned mind. So what are they? What are the three poisoned mind in human life? Greed, hatred and anger, and delusion. These three poisoned mind creating misery in your life. 
creating unhappiness, dissatisfactory, and suffering. So think about your mind now. How is, how is your mind? How does it look like? Do you have freedom of your mind? Your mind begins to think from the moment you get up and continuously thinking until you fall asleep at night. And it, it creates a thought and receive information from life around us and from the world. So your mind is a creator of your thought. So it also constantly creates mental drama. That's why mindfulness, living dharma practice is critical. Just to catch it, one thought, when it arises in your mind. Otherwise, this thought chasing after thought, the other thought arising, and the creating drama of, uh, of uh, uh, life. Our action and our reaction are very strongly affected by what goes in, in your mind. So it is only by calming our mind, calming these hectic thought or distractions and constant thought in our mind, by letting go, by aware of it, gently aware of it, and gently treat it so it can let go, it can go away, and then cultivating your inner peace and inner freedom by calming your mind. That's why meditation is critical. So we can enjoy this freedom of mind. We don't have to think all the time. If we have a freedom of mind, you can accept or reject any thought arise in accordance with your will. If you don't need to work, you don't need to plan or don't need to solve any problem, it is time to let go. Calming your mind in this way by just simply letting go. So it is possible to calm our mind. At the moment, you need to use your mind. Yes, you can be a creative thinker and doing all things you need to do. But if you don't need to think, it is a time to calm your mind. <coughs> it is like uh, switching off an engine. Even though you don't use your car, you like uh, keep your engine on all the time. If you allow your constant thought comes and goes. When you need to use car to go somewhere, of course we need to turn on engine and use car and arrive there. After you get there, you switch it off, your engine, and take your key away. So meditation is something like that. You're just uh, sitting regularly every morning, hopefully, and every evening, then you s switch off your engine so you can enter samadhi concentration, enter Ironsang area, world, Ironsang world, and you can experience this meditative concentration with a full of uh, awareness, and kindness and gentleness uh, in this place. So when you are able to switch off like that, when you are able to let go of your mind, instead of allowing useless thought all the time in your mind. So Tessan was very particular about this. In order to live our life on earth, especially in this 21st century, we have to use our minds and bodies, especially a mind. And whatever you engage in necessities, you use enough of your mind, your thoughts and, and uh, constant uh, thinking. 
That's why it is very critical to switch off once while regularly. It is like a burning of the candle here. When you make a light here, they have to burn their body to produce the light. If you constantly leave the candle burning using your all oil, which is your good energy. So always make sure you have a light when you need it in necessity. Otherwise, turn it off, switch off. So imagine then your mind is calm like a calm lake without wave. free from any impulse of your thought, free from any thought in your mind. It is a state of calmness, quietude, and you become very quiet. And then what happens? It is not just a, nothing is there, but when you are very quiet, then you become conscious of this Buddha nature. You become aware of your inner self, which is usually hidden by your constant thought, constant distractions, constant flow of your thought and mental images. So when you become, become aware of this inner being and entering this samadhi state, then you experience and see your Buddha nature. Thus, happiness and bliss emerge from this sentence. So this is the reason we celebrate life of Dharma Tathagata here. Not just that, oh, they did beautiful things, they are wonderful beings. That is not one Buddhist way to celebrate their life. The reason we come to temple and celebrate the life of Tathagata is that we learn from them. We learn from their experience that we make a vow to become enlightened. Today, we also commemorate all sages and saints in the far left here who proclaim the value of spiritual cultivation and universal salvation. Sotesan was very distinctively accepting other religion and recognized all sages as his peers, as co-workers. This is one of the distinctive characteristics of one Buddhism that building interfaith, interreligious understanding and cooperation is critical to build peace on earth. If you think, if any religion say that this is uh, my religion is the best religion, only not the best, but this is the only true religion, then it can create a lot of conflict and problems with uh, different traditions. Because if this is the only truth, then we have to, I have to convert, convert to all of you you are already converted, but we have to convert somebody else out there to our side because they are suffering there, they are struggling. We need to recognize their truth and their spirituality also beautiful and meaningful. If you look at the historical worldwide conflict and wars, any wars intensified by religious factor or a holy world or religious world, it became very cruel. The most cruel and the, the longest world be happened by that. So one Buddhist calling in 21st century is that bringing religion together to walk and understand each other and find a commonality to help humanity together, to elevate humanity together. We are United Nations is a political entity. It's about uh, 10 blocks from here. Now recognize a religion, 
world religion as a key partner to build peace on earth. Because they recognize religion becomes uh, viable to build uh, peace and security. Because of misuse and misunderstanding of religion can provoke conflict and violence and brings chaos to our world. Today, we also recognize bodhisattvas and uh, enlightened masters who live the ideal life of a loving kindness and compassion and showed us how to do it. We also recognize and remember dedicated ministers here who cultivated the Buddha Dharma in all of us. Those uh, devotees helped us and taught us to learn and how to practice Buddha Dharma. With their commitments, with their perseverance and, and their service. So we can learn from them. We can do that too. And we recognize devoted uh, as well as uh, dedicated uh, laity. This is another very distinctive characteristic of one Buddhism is that we have equality between dedicated minister and dedicated laity. If you look at the most religion, they just recognize mm -hmm. Ordain the ministers or ordain the monks and nuns at their lineage. 21st century, I think Sotesan's um, intention of bringing Buddha Dharma to whole humanity is the way that bringing this equality between ministers and their, their uh, practitioners. So it doesn't matter whether you become minister or, or lay people. It really depends on the quality of your practice and quality of your life and quality of your dedication. So I think this is a very beautiful uh, teaching in one body that helps you to have a, that kind of commitment and vow to become the Takata. We also celebrate all parents. Here, the parents of Tathagata, or parents of uh, enlightened masters, and Tathagata, as well as uh, bodhisattvas, and our own parents. How many of you have a parent who are no longer with you on earth? Yeah. Parents and parents. Sometimes in, in human life, we may have a difficulty with our own parents. But when you look at the parents, if you have a deep discussion, they didn't know other way to, to help us or to raise us. But today, in our ceremony, if you had any difficulty with your parents who are no longer here on earth, then heal your relationship with them. And forgive them if they hurt you. And ask forgiveness if you hurt them. And if you are Buddha, your parents are here on earth with you, and they make this special effort today, and beginning today, to heal your relationship with your parents. Parents and parents past uh, parents of parents, or parents of past, present, future, is critical because when we are young, we are influenced by parents. So in this way, you can choose very, very enlightened and spiritual parents in the future by recognizing that relationship and celebrate uh, lives of all parents. At the same time, we include all sentient beings who are struggling at this moment with the full of greed, selfishness, egocentrism, anger, or, or hatred and delusion. And we pray for them. We send our um, loving kindness for them to be encouraged, to have a motivation to understand Buddha Dharma 
and enter the path of awakening. So you can think about anyone in your life or life around you that need this special prayer and special uh, encouragement. So this very simple uh, uh, seven tablet, but it symbolizes all very important uh, Buddhist teachings of uh, co-dependence of origination. And when one Buddhism interdependency of interconnectedness of all, when we see our life in this uh, large context like this, we can think about and ask a fundamental question today about your life, about yourself. Who am I? Think about it. Who am I? In this stage, are you nearby Tathagata? Are you still struggling with all sentient things? Or are you elevating and making progress? Where are you? Who am I? Where am I? Why am I the way I am now at this moment on Earth? How am I doing on Earth? And the most important question is, what shall I do for the rest of my life? So Tessan said, whatever you have received in this life, whether wholesome or unwholesome, favorable or unfavorable, is the result of what you did in the past. Think about it. So where, where you are now, and why you are now, and how you are now, is a result of your total past. Nobody else did it for you. You yourself created the condition you are in. And so Tessan continued, whatever you, are, you have done in this life will be when you will receive in your future. This is, in fact, natural karma. So we are creating and recreating. How we live here and now by asking this very fundamental question and by making vow today, you decide what to do for the rest of your life. That way you are creating and recreating yourself. Because of this uh, interdependency, because of a cause and effect. Whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever you do, never waste it. Everything is recorded in your store consciousness, we call eighth consciousness. Whatever you think, whatever you say, whatever you do, stored and recorded in the universe, universal recording chamber called the Iransa truth. Think about it. Nothing you can hide. You may forget about it. You may not aware of it. But if you know the principle, universal principle of cause and effect, whatever we do, say, think, is restored in your store consciousness, in your subconsciousness. At the same time, it is stored in the Dharmakaya world, in Irwansang Dharmakaya. That's why it makes you sure you get when you give, what goes around and comes around. So every day we make a vow, vow to the truth, or Iransang vow. We make a vow today and renew our commitment today to cultivate our mind and body, our five senses and mind, just like this. So we can progress in grace rather than regress in, in harm. So we create our own reality. This is a very, very powerful and simple that you create your own life. How? How do you create yourself? The way 
Yeren Sang Bao remind us, constantly remind us, the way we use our minds and bodies. It depends on how you use your minds and bodies. You make either progress or regress. You create beauty and goodness and compassion and love and kindness in your life or the other side of it. So it depends on how you use your minds and bodies. Everything else in the universe, everything else in your life, because of interdependency and interconnectedness, they give you feedback. So when you get into trouble, that means that the root cause is within you. So you have to learn from your mistake, from your conflict, from your life. So this is the one Sote San taught us to celebrate this spiritual memorial. It's not just to think about it or remember it, it is really knowing how they live and who they are and how they are in many different stages of their being. We are too, among all of us here, we are all in different stages in our development, in our uh, spiritual cultivation. So today we are really making real commitment that we can make a very practical, everyday living Dharma practice and practice with the mindfulness, with the mind study, using the mind study and living dharma. When you have that kind of practical, specific plan and detailed process, you are more likely to reach there, to become Tathagata. If we have just a vision and goal and dream and vow, only 20% to reach the goal. But if you have a goal, vision and vow with a specific plan of this uh, living dharma and uh, mind body using this uh, study mind mindfulness you are more likely continue to practice it after our retreat i received many email that because of this uh, living dharma practice because of the mind study they were able to practice every single day. That gives them power. You are now recovering your own power, own authority, and the confidence that you can begin a new journey today to become enlightened one, to become Tathagata in 21st century. Whole world, seven billion people waiting for you to do that because we will be a better place to live. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Sotesan and as well as the Gautama Buddha is really sending you a great, great blessing to do that. Great encouragement, have this kind of a vow, this kind of practice to become one of them so they can share their work with all of you. So as we celebrate this spiritual memorial, and as we celebrate all our teachers, all our parents, 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 who are gone, and this is the way that we think about our invisible world. We have a conscious mind, we have an unconscious mind. And we have visible world with the body and invisible with, with the mind. And think about it, how it interdependent. Not only interdependent with the, all beings in the universe, but interdependent with the, your past, present, future, and interdependence of your conscious mind and unconscious mind, and interdependence of your mind and body. So the way we celebrate this uh, spiritual memorial is that we become, we become enlightened and share this positive news and beauty and goodness and loving kindness to especially your near ones, your family, your spouse, your children and friends and coworkers and spread it through the whole world.